In a traditional military sense, it's when armies look to generate momentum after using the poor winter conditions to replenish. It is true that the fighting has become more static during typically cold conditions. However, all signs seem to be pointing towards an upcoming Russian push. Moscow has mobilized hundreds of thousands more men, as well as increased its production of weapons and ammunition. Kyiv is expecting to see major attacks from the east and south as soon as the 24th of February, which would mark a year since the full-scale invasion. So, if Russia does launch another offensive, what will it try to take? It's the eastern city which has been grabbing the headlines because of the endless conflicting claims over who controls it. For now, Kyiv isn't hinting at a tactical retreat. It claims the Russians are suffering about 500 casualties per day as they stage relentless attacks. Ukraine reckons its own losses are not as high. Regular Russian forces appear to have replaced mercenaries from the Wagner Group as they continue to surround the city. For now, Ukrainian troops are continuing to hold it. If or when the city falls, invading forces are expected to push towards the cities of Slovyansk and Kramatorsk. It could allow Moscow to capture the entire eastern Donetsk region, one of its official goals. Regular Russian forces appear to have replaced mercenaries from the Wagner Group as they continue to surround the city. For now, Ukrainian troops are continuing to hold it. If or when the city falls, invading forces are expected to push towards the cities of Slovyansk and Kramatorsk. It could allow Moscow to capture the entire eastern Donetsk region, one of its official goals. But that would involve capturing more than 4,000 square miles 10,360 square kilometers. In a period where Russia has been making minimal, costly gains, the Ukrainians would have to be seriously overpowered or taken by surprise. After trying and failing last November, Russian forces have started launching attacks on the small town of Buladar, also in the Donetsk region. Alongside capturing the whole of Donbass, Luhansk and Donetsk regions, Russian President Vladimir Putin is thought to be looking to widen the land corridor he has seized between Crimea and Russia. The capture of Buladar would certainly go towards those, but it would be more valuable to the Kremlin in a propaganda sense. Military milestones help the Kremlin to justify its special military operation back in Russia, as well as appease critics. They also could provide President Putin with a political way out, if he can keep hold of what he seizes. Away from the Eastern Front, the conflict line south of the city Zaporizhia is another direction Kyiv is worried about. The concern is that Russian forces could push north towards the towns of Orykiv and Pokrovsk, the latter is in Donetsk region. If this were to happen, it would push back the firing positions of longer-range Ukrainian missiles which can strike deep into the land corridor Russia controls further south. Given that American HIMARS have been able to travel up to 80 kilometers 50 miles and are about to go up to 120 kilometers, the occupied cities of Melitopol and Tokmak are comfortably within Ukraine's range. Moscow is also wary of a Ukrainian advance here too towards Melitopol. Kyiv has talked about the importance of the city before, saying its liberation would allow Ukraine to cut off Russian supply routes to Crimea. However, Valery Zaluzhny, the commander-in-chief of Ukraine's armed forces, has also admitted his troops don't have the numbers of equipment for such an attack.
Despite being less than 25 miles from the border with Russia, Ukraine's second largest city in the northeast has never fallen into Moscow's control. Like so many areas, it has been mostly torn apart from Russia's attempts to snatch it from Kyiv's control. Kharkiv's population has endured almost constant missile strikes and resulting blackouts throughout this winter. Despite being less than 25 miles from the border with Russia, Ukraine's second largest city in the northeast has never fallen into Moscow's control. Like so many areas, it has been mostly torn apart from Russia's attempts to snatch it from Kyiv's control. Kharkiv's population has endured almost constant missile strikes and resulting blackouts throughout this winter. Invading forces could seal the city off from Kyiv, which could prevent Ukrainian troops currently south of Kharkiv from retreating to the capital. Ukraine's capital is still Russia's ultimate prize. However, this is in 2022. Last year, joint military exercises between Belarus and Russia turned into an advance on Kyiv when Moscow used its ally as a launchpad for its invasion. At the start of this year there were fears of history repeating itself when both countries announced drills once more, this time in the form of defensive air force exercises north of Ukraine. Belarus denied it had plans to join the invasion. Moscow rejected claims it had tried to force it. Now, both the West and Ukraine seem to agree on there being no intelligence suggesting the capital could be under the threat it faced last year. Plus, Russia used its best trained forces during its first attempt, when its goal was to topple the Ukrainian government. We do not see formed assault groups capable of reaching Kyiv, said Ukraine's outgoing defense minister Oleksiy Reznikov. Besides, it is impossible to capture Kyiv in principle. It is a large city with 4 million people, ready to defend themselves. If Russia indeed launches a large-scale offensive and gains momentum, Mr. Reznikov's successor could give a different assessment. 